You will often hear these two opposite arguments in your WhatsApp groups, Twitter fights, and YouTube comments. Argument one is, our ancestors were vegetarians. Look at our teeth. We don't have teeth like tigers and lions. And look at an elephant or rhino. They get so big and strong by just eating plants. So the need for animal protein logic is invalid. Argument two is, we were hunter-gatherers that ate meat. Look at our digestive system. We produce a lot of acid that is required to denature proteins. And our guts cannot digest cellulose, insoluble fiber like cows and goats can. Which of these arguments is true? To answer this question, I want you to pause and think. The very fact that you're able to do so after understanding sounds that came out of a earphone or speaker that converted electrical signals to air pressure changes that you perceive as sound and those sounds themselves encode alphabets that are logically arranged in the oldest Indian languages like Tamil or Sanskrit in the order of where in your throat and mouth they emerge from. Ka from the back of your throat, cha from the tongue touching the palate, ta from the roof of the mouth, ta from the tongue touching the back of the teeth, and pa or ma from the lips. And this sound traveled to you from my house in Chennai to a series of servers connected by undersea fiber optic cables after being converted from analog to digital packets that are reliably sent to all of you using really sophisticated error checking mathematics that underpins this network protocol. And this, if you really think about it, is a product of the one thing that Homo sapiens has every other living thing other than dolphins do not. A giant brain in proportion to body size. So you'd imagine that with this giant brain of ours, we'd be able to find out whether our ancestors were veg or non-veg. So it turns out the answer is pretty interesting. So were they veg or non-veg? They were non-veg, but it's complicated. Let's start with our brain. Our brains weigh about 2% of total body weight whereas all other animal brains, except dolphins, have much smaller brains. If our brains had to be of a size comparable to other animals, it would be about 10 times smaller. Not just that, about 20% of the energy our body produces is devoted to brain function. That is insane. It's like the US defense budget. Most people know huge amounts of money are being spent, but very few know for what exactly. So why is the human brain so different from other animals? How did our brains evolve to be this way? It turns out that the most direct reason for our brains growing this big is food and how we eat it. We are unique in being the only species that does cooking. All other animals eat only raw food and to derive sufficient energy and nutrition from it, they must devote about one third of every 24 hour day for gathering food and an equal amount of time to chewing it. To get the same number of calories that we do from one portion of French fries, a rhino has to eat three kgs of grass. Our ancestors, hominins, began eating raw meat about 2.6 million years ago. Oh, sorry, the debate, our ancestors, were non-veg. But eating raw meat could not have been easy to eat or digest. Even today, when we eat protein, it is harder to digest and very filling. Over time, we learn to reduce the raw meat to smaller pieces by cutting, pounding, crushing, or tearing before consuming. So having an opposable thumb was super useful. Meat and the nutrients and energy derived from it is believed to have played a vital role in the evolution of humans. But how are we sure of this? One, archeological evidence. We see human tool inflicted injuries in animal bones around human settlements. But Homo sapiens, the human beings of today, do not have the teeth that would have been suitable for consuming raw meat, which is why we have this veg, non-veg ancestor debate in the first place. Our teeth today are not designed for raw meat. In fact, to reduce one single piece of dry meat to small particles, you will need between 50 to 70 chewing motions. Now imagine doing that for a whole meal. To get some idea of how painful that can be, recall the aching jaws when you eat dried meat like jerky. 
Now, what does this have to do with our unusually large brain? Well, a large brain is possible only if our ancestors learned how to get more nutrition and energy out of the meat they were eating. A living organism needs a very energy intensive diet to keep a large brain functioning. And this could have been possible only if our ancestors learned cooking. Initially, it's likely that the meat was cooking directly on an open fire and its embers. As time progressed, in the Neolithic age, we probably began using bowls and pots for cooking. And remember, we take bowls and pots for granted, but you can only cook meat to a small degree over an open fire because the outside will start to burn. But when you cook in a pot with water and start making gravies and soups, you can break down food into much simpler, easier to digest molecules. Recent studies have found that we have probably been cooking our food for over 1.9 million years. And it is this process of cooking that has helped us derive greater nutrition and energy from our food. So in a way, to be human is to be a cook. How does cooking help get more nutrition and energy? You see, raw meat, raw plants, fruits, seeds, etc. are tough to eat. And plants particularly produce anti-nutrients and poisons to prevent animals from eating them. When cooking food, the proteins in the meat and carbohydrates in plants break down, often also releasing many substances that change the flavor of meat or plant products in the process. So we also get taste and flavor in addition to nutrients. When we consume this food, it is easier to chew and digest. So lesser energy is spent in consuming it as jaws no longer need to exert as much pressure to cut and chew the food while a greater amount of nutrients are derived from it. Today, we need roughly less than half the time as the Stone Age people to chew our food. And we get the chewing done using 30 to 50% less strength in our jaws. How does this compare to our monkey cousins? For starters, we have smaller teeth, weaker jaws, and a smaller mouth. This could only have been possible if over millennia, we have used our teeth less and less in chewing. Our jaws have not had to chew much raw food and our mouths did not have to stretch out so wide to consume whole raw meat. And this could only have been possible if we were cutting our food into smaller pieces and cooking it. Another piece of evidence for this is the mutation in a human muscle protein called myosin. Myosin is a protein that plays an important role in the molecular mechanism for clenching jaws. This mutation, scientists believe, is responsible for the reduced strength of our jaws. This is also believed to be the start of a human being's greater sensitivity of chewing motions and an increase in the importance of the mouthfeel of the food we eat. Animals that eat raw food can't really sense mouthfeel, while we can now tell the difference between soft, hard, viscous, rough, chewy, etc. A recent article published in Communications Biology has found that eating naturally fermented foods could have led to an increase in brain size and a decrease in colon size for early humans. The team of scientists have found that as early humans ate more naturally or accidentally fermented foods, their gut organs shrunk. You see, fermentation is the outsourcing of digestion to microbes. A smaller gut used lesser energy, while more energy and nutrition was extracted from the food, which could then be used by the brain, leading to the increase in the size and cognitive abilities of the brain. As our brains advanced, our cooking methods improved and we learned how to intentionally ferment foods, not just to preserve it for longer times, but also derive more nutrients, eventually leading to an even smaller colon and an even larger brain. So if human beings are the most advanced and intelligent species today, it can all be attributed to one vital skill. And oh, the veg non-veg ancestor debate. The ability to grow our own food and herd cattle allowed our ancestors living in North and West of India 3000 years ago, take advantage of large, flat, fertile plains and pastures to come up with spiritual concepts like ahimsa and a truly delicious vegetarian cuisine that makes some people feel maybe our ancestors were vegetarian. So it really depends on how far back the definition of ancestor goes. And finally, chemical called shiratine in the brinjal. 
दोस्तों चीनी की बजाय आप ये पांच चीजें खा सकते हो जो कि ज्यादा हेल्दी है बेसिकली उस मुर्गी की डाइट ऐसी है उसको कुछ ऐसी चीजें दी जाती हैं कि उसके पूरा साल पीरियड चलते रहते हैं वो जो अंडा है ना वो उसके पीरियड है बेसिकली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो द राइट वे ऑफ ईटिंग कर्ड स्टेट हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई रियल फूड फ्रॉम फेक फूड रूल नंबर वन ईट फूड दैट इवेंचुअली रॉट Yeah, if there is one thing that is actually undoing two million years of evolution that made our brains this big and smart and allowed us to invent science and technology and mathematics, it is without a doubt social media. Explaining the science of food and debunking pseudoscience is hard work. So I request you to consider becoming a member of this channel. Members get to be part of a private group that will work together to dig into the science of food in far more detail and also discover the true joy of food.